Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. October 12th, 2017. The Cooner Report, presented by Kelly Financial Services. This is the Cooner Report. Did the Las Vegas police act too late? This is incredible. You couldn't make, I'm telling you, you couldn't make this stuff up. So here is now the absolute latest developments on the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. And now it confirms exactly what I said just a few days ago. So if you remember, my friends, and now the Fuhrer, by the way, the backlash from the victims and the families is now really beginning to explode. Because what is now what is now becoming obvious is what the hell were the police doing for 18 long minutes? So as you know, I, uh, I talked about this a couple days ago. A security guard by the name of Jesus Campos, and I'm going to get to him a bit later because there's big developments on him as well, um, apparently approached Stephen Paddock's room. He had uh, There was a jammed fire door, uh, a fire hallway door, and so he went to investigate. He then approached the hotel suite. 200 rounds of ammunition was fired through the door. He was hit in the leg. So 200 rounds are fired. He's only hit in the leg. Okay, lucky for him. And then he tries to escape. He tries to get away down the hallway. And then he is met by a Mandalay Bay worker, a hotel worker by the name of Stephen Shuck. Stephen Shuck has now confirmed that the shooting took place six minutes before the massacre took place, that he saw Jesus Campos, he helped him escape from the hallway, and then he immediately called the hotel dispatch to tell them, call the police, shots fired, shots fired, a man with a rifle is shooting people on the 32nd floor. Listen now to Stephen Shuck tell his story on the Today Show. Roll it, Brittany. I was about a third of the way down the hallway, and I started to hear shots go off. The rounds started coming down the hallway. I could feel them pass right behind my head. Uh, something hit me in the back, and I took cover. You know, remain calm. If I freak out right now, it's, it's only going to get me killed or, or injured. So, shots were fired. We, uh, bullets were sprayed across the hallway. He could actually feel them behind this coming right near, whizzing by his head. He then calls hotel dispatch. So, Jesus Campos, he scrambles him to safety. They're now in the stairway, the fire exit. He calls hotel dispatch 959. Roll it, Brittany. Wait. Someone's firing a gun up here. Someone's firing a rifle on the 32nd floor down the hallway. He looked like he fired down the hallway when I got close to the door. I told myself. Do me a favor. Play it again. Please. Call the police. Someone's firing a gun up here. Someone's firing a rifle on the 32nd floor down the hallway. He looked like he fired down the hallway when I got close to the door. Call the police. Shots fired. Shots fired. Man with a rifle with a gun in the hallway. Now, this is at 9.59. The shooting allegedly begins to take place at 10.05. It goes on for nearly 10 minutes. The police, by their own admission, only arrive at the hotel at 10.17. So, the question now is this. What took place during those 18 minutes? Why did it take the police... 18 minutes to get to the Las Vegas Hotel, to get to the Mandalay Bay. 18 minutes. Now, when I call 911, this is Boston, I understand, Foxborough, Rentham, whatever, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes before they arrive, it's not 18 minutes. It's not 18 minutes. 
So now what is clear, there's no getting, and this is why now the victims are exploding. This is now why the families are with, they're already, by the way, beginning to sue. Already now they're lining up to sue. They're suing uh, MGM Resorts uh, because, A, the security there was, I mean, I mean, you want to talk about sloppy. You want to talk about uh, lax and pathetic security, okay? But now, why is the police taking 18 minutes? So they've changed the timeline dramatically because if you remember, for the first week when there was real national attention on this story, because it's died down now, when there was really big-time national attention, even international attention, what was the line the police kept saying again and again? That the security guard was shot after Paddock unleashed hellfire upon the concert. In fact, they said not only was he shot after, but they kept saying again and again, this guy's a hero. Jesus Campos is a hero. The guy's a hero. Why is he a hero? Because when he approached the suite, the hotel suite, the door, that's when Paddock had set up his cameras. That's when he shot the security guard. And they say he probably saved countless people's lives because he disrupted the killer's actions. It was Campos who then approaching the door after the shooting they kept saying oh he's a hero he saved people's lives well now he didn't approach the door after the shooting he approached the door and was shot six minutes before the shooting now when i brought this up saying this now changes everything because now the question is could the police have arrived on the scene and possibly prevented this massacre what liberals began to say, because you have to believe what the media tells you. You have to believe the official narrative. You see, when the FBI tells you something, you have to believe it. Like when they told us about Benghazi. You see, when they tell you it's a spontaneous protest, shut up, don't ask questions about the four dead. You have to shut up and don't ask questions about the four dead. That's how liberals are. So what the liberals were calling into the show saying, well, maybe the security guard froze. You know, he gets shot and he just sits there for 10, 15, 20 minutes and he's just in a state of shock. That's why he couldn't call anybody, couldn't get on his radio, couldn't get on his cell phone, couldn't call 911 because the guy's just in shock. You see, that's just how that explains everything. OK, well, now he's not in shock because you have the audio of Stephen Shuck, the worker, having called the hotel dispatch. Brittany, do me a favor. Play it again, Sam. Wait. Call the police. Someone's firing a gun up here. Someone's firing a rifle on the 32nd floor down the hallway. He looked like he fired down the hallway when I got close to the door. Okay. So now they know there's an active shooter, and they know there's an active shooting situation at 9.59. So we know that now. Now there's no there's no disputing that now that's gone so we, so we've just blown another hole in their story okay Jeff 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 don't be a conspiracy theorist now Jeff Jeff he acted alone this was shot after the security guard was shot after come on now Jeff Jeff he he acted alone he just snapped stop asking questions shut up and let's ban guns shut up and let's do gun control Jeff don't ask. Stop asking these questions, Jeff. Okay? Just be quiet now. Be like a sheep. So, here is now to me what is clearly emerging. Now this is, in, this is now indisputable. You have to pick your poison. Pick your poison. Because the very same police that were not on the scene for 18 minutes... In other words, this kind of gross incompetence, negligence, or ineptness are the same police that are now investigating the shooting. You want to talk about a profound conflict of interest, this is it. So, take your pick. Pick your poison. Door one or door two. Either we're talking now about the Keystone Cops, that these guys just literally can't tie their shoes properly, which is why everything about this investigation just doesn't make sense. So we don't know the truth and we'll never know the truth because of sheer incompetence or pick door number two, 
they're lying and covering up. There's now only, literally, there's now only two options. Their official story has now fallen apart. Their narrative has fallen apart. When asked, they will not tell us a motive. They say they don't know a motive. Now they're saying we will never know a motive. Now, let me throw two more logs on the fire again. These are indisputable facts. And I've never heard of this, but maybe you have, so you may want to enlighten me. 617-266-6868 is the number. Number one, it now has been reported by the local media in Las Vegas, who, by the way, are doing a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job, because they're asking questions. They're not buying the false bill of goods that the official line is now peddling. The uh, Both of them, Las Vegas Sun, Las Vegas Review uh, Journal, all of them are asking tough questions and uh, phenomenal coverage, okay? But let that go. They're doing what the media should be doing. At Reno, Nevada, in one of Paddock's homes, the crime scene, in theory, is supposed to be secure. There was a breach. Somebody in the middle of the night, they have to admit, it was reported by the local media, the police had to admit it, broke into one of Paddock's homes in Reno, and they admit that something was stolen from the home. What was stolen from the home? They either will not say, or they don't know. Now, how could you not have secured a crime scene? We're one week into this investigation. This is the deadliest mass shooting in American history. Yeah, they've actually gone into these homes, raided these homes multiple times. You don't have people on lookout? You're not securing the crime scene? Uh, again, it, what are we talking Keystone Cops, or is there a cover-up? Again, pick your poison, door one or door two. And now comes a very interesting point as well. The security guard, Jesus Campos. From the beginning, I thought it was very strange. There's a couple of things that just don't add up. And again, the local media in Las Vegas are pointing it out. Now the families and the victims are pointing it out. There is now indisputable evidence 200 rounds of ammunition were fired through the door, into the hallway, sprayed. 200 rounds. 200. I want you to think how many rounds that is. He gets hit only in the leg. Okay. Maybe he's a very lucky man. Okay. The cops keep claiming he's a hero, although now they've changed the story dramatically. How come this guy hasn't done an interview with the media? He's not in critical condition. He just got shot in the leg. Just in the leg. How come he has not done one media interview? The cops are yakking to the media. The FBI is yakking to the media. People at the Mandalay Bay are now yakking to the media. The victims, family members, friends, everybody's doing a, an interview with the media. But there's no Jesus Campos. Now, why would the guy who allegedly was the first one to be on the scene, the first one to be shot, the first one in the hallway, the one who could answer a lot of questions, suddenly Jesus Campos doesn't want to give talks to the media, doesn't want to be interviewed by the media? Hmm. And now it turns out he is a security guard, in theory. He is not registered as a Nevada security guard. Everybody who works as a security guard at any one of these casinos, hotels, resorts in Nevada, you are required to register as either an armed or an unarmed security guard with what is called the PILB, the Private Investigators Licensing Board. You are required by law. Guess what? Jesus Campos is not registered with the PILB. He's nowhere to be found. He's not a registered Nevada security guard. Now, if he's not a registered Nevada security guard, in all honesty, who the hell is he? Not conspiracy, basic question, basic fact. 
Was he even an employee at the Mandalay Bay? We don't know. And I've got to ask the question because he's gone. He's fled. He's gone. He's gone. Was he an illegal alien? I have to ask the question. A lot of illegals work in Las Vegas. Was he, was the Mandalay Bay hiring an illegal alien? And can that be another reason why they are covering this thing up and they are lying to the victims, to the families, and to the American people? No matter now how you cut it, and you can call me any name in the book you want, nothing now adds up. Nothing. This stinks to the core. 617-266-6868 is the number. Let me ask you this. Were the police negligent? Were they utterly incompetent in arriving at the scene so late? And why did it take them 18 long minutes to get to the Mandalay Bay Resort and Hotel? Could they have prevented the massacre? And maybe is this the reason why they're covering up their own negligence and incompetence? 617-266-6868. Your calls. Next. Call the police. Someone's firing a gun up here. Someone's firing a rifle on the 32nd floor down the hallway. 1227 here on the great WRKO. All right, Jeff Cooner, Boston's bulldozer, cleaning up the liberal bull, willing to go where the mainstream media refuses to go. Victor in Newburyport. Go ahead, Victor. Hey, Jeff, love your show, man. Thank hey, you, Victor. I've spent some time in the security business, so let me just hit a couple of bullet points, minor points. When the... Uh, the, the guard there, not the guard, but the security guy went up. He was answering to a, uh, a, a jar door. So that tells me they have a system in place. It's a multi-million dollar system tracking activities in their, um, in their hotel. Uh, when someone, quote, in security goes to check on a door, that doesn't mean, mean they're a security guard. That could be a reporter calling them a, a security guard. That's just the guy that goes up and checks on the door, makes sure things are either correct or incorrect but my major or another minor point is being in vegas many many times 10 o'clock at night is when this happened uh is like com is like the height of commuting time in boston so the police traveling in that traffic are going to be delayed somewhat even with sirens running but my major point is this when the security guy calls down saying with well, this gunfire up here now, the people taking that call have no idea of what is about to be unleashed. So what do they do? They do not call the police. They call the general manager. They call the shift manager. Or they call, you know, someone internally. They have internal security. Minutes are clicking by not knowing that there's doomsday for 58 people that is about to be unleashed. And my final point, Jeff, is since this shooting where 58 souls were lost, there have been 30 souls lost in Chicago, and no one cares, Emmanuel, whatever his name is, the mayor, no one cares about those poor people that are silently being murdered day in and day out, and it's time for a regime change. This place needs Clorox to kill all the germs on the surface called the Democrat left-leaning liberal. Uh, Victor, thank you for that call. Look, I, I agree with you on the last point. In fact, there's been 500 murders now in Chicago this year alone. 500. Uh, at the pace, the pace they're on now, you're going to have 10. Literally, it's Chicago alone is going to have 10 times what happened in Las Vegas. 10 times the shootings, 10 times the victims, 10 times the injured. But I don't buy, with all due respect, Victor, I don't buy the earlier one. Look, I don't know, you're going to call the manager, the uh, the assistant manager, when there's a shooting? And you can hear it on the radio? You play the audio, you can hear it. You can hear the bullets flying. And not only a shooting, I'm talking 200 bullets are flying. And you, got, you got bullets flying everywhere. Security guard down? Guys calling dispatch? 
And so they're going to, mm, let, me, let me talk to my manager. Can't, oh, I can't find the manager. Let me talk to my assistant manager. Mm, let me see. What should I do? I think you go right away to 911. It's obvious you go to 911. Now, you're saying about the traffic. Look, there were cops. Remember, there's a concert right across the street. So there are cops on detail at the concert. Now, they couldn't cross the street? Remember, this is six long minutes before the massacre takes place. It doesn't add up. Again, it doesn't add up. It just doesn't. So, either the police, again, I go back to this fundamental point. Take your pick. Pick your poison. Door one, door two. Either you're talking about an incredibly incompetent, inept, really almost criminally negligent police force that did nothing or refused to do anything and could have prevented this massacre from taking place, or number two, we're talking cover-up. And we're talking cover-up now potentially by the very people who dropped the ball in the first place. In other words, they got a self-interest to cover it up. 617-266-6868. Let's take it to Lori Grandy in the newsroom. Wait. Call the police. Someone's firing a gun up here. Someone's firing a rifle on the 32nd floor down the hallway. I was about a third of the way down the hallway, and I started to hear shots go off. The rounds started coming down the hallway. I could feel them pass right behind my head. Uh, something hit me in the back, and I took cover. Okay, my friends, a Las Vegas hotel worker, it is now official, warned the hotel before the Las Vegas shooter opened fire uh, at the Route 91 Harvard, uh, Harvest forgive me, concert. 58 dead, 500 injured, the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. The hotel was warned. The hotel dispatcher was told. And now the question is growing and growing and growing. Tension is almost about to explode, frankly, in Las Vegas about why the police took 18 minutes. From 9.59 is when the hotel dispatcher was told to when they arrived at the hotel, 10.17. From that point on, uh, during that period, nearly 60 killed, 500 injured, were the police negligent? Could they have prevented this from happening? 617-266-6868. And as all of this is taking place, the autopsy of Stephen Paddock has at least been partially completed. And in particular, they looked at his brain. They wanted to see if there was brain damage, mental illness, whatever it is. And according now to the people who committed the autopsy, They said that his brain was, quote, perfectly normal. They found no abnormalities in his brain, no sign of uh, brain damage or uh, any kind of um, lesions or anything that indicated that there was something wrong with the way his brain functioned or whether he had some kind of a long-term mental health problem uh, in his head. They said there was, the autopsy showed his brain was as normal as most people's. So, what I want to know from liberals is this, because now they're looking into the toxicology report. They want to look at whether there were drugs in his system. They want to look at whether there were prescri- uh, prescription medications in his system. And I want you to think about the liberals right now. And think about the left. Immediately within 10, 12 hours of the shooting, they don't know what happened. They're already calling for the banning of guns. Gun control, gun control, gun control. If there was damage to his brain, they would have called for looking into mental health or mental health issues or whatever. But if they do find drugs in his system, whatever it is, you think they're going to call for drugs to be made illegal? I mean, just think about it. If, if, and I underline the word if, if they find that there was massive drugs in a system, are they going to be calling for drugs to be illegal or for a war on drugs? No. They want to legalize weed. Many of them now even want to decriminalize some of the harder drugs. So notice their hypocrisy again. When it comes to guns, 
ban them. Mental illness, maybe we'll do something. But when it comes to the puff puff or anything else regarding drugs, leave it alone. Hey, people are going to do it. You can't stop it. 617-266-6868. And in North Attleboro, thanks for holding and welcome. I have had some experience with the Las Vegas Police Department, departments. Um, my uncle, about five years ago, uh, lived in Vegas, was a taxi driver. He was attacked. And so my cousin and I are his representatives. We both flew down there. She's from New York. I'm from Boston. And when we got to the hospital, they couldn't tell us anything what happened. It was in front of one of the hotels. So we go over to a restaurant across the street, and there happened to be a table full of cops. So we go over to the cops, and they're wearing like three or four different kind of uniforms. And we explained to them what happened and said, we just really want to get the report to see what went on. And they couldn't even tell us whose department would be in charge of that because there were three separate police forces. And then when I was in front of this casino, they were like, well, the casino handles security to the street in front of the casino. So it, this was, you know, five years ago. We still don't even know what happened. And, you know, the police departments, they couldn't tell us at the table who would have written that report if in case somebody did write the report. And so you mean nobody was arrested for the, for the assault? Nobody was arrested because it happened in front of a casino. And they said the casino was in charge of their security to the street. So in other words, it's a mess. And like I said, there was a table full of cops with all different uniforms, and they couldn't figure out, well, whose department that would be, which police force would be in charge of that. They even wear different uniforms. My experience with the Vegas police was the casinos take care of the casinos. So if this happened, you know, especially off a of main route, I don't think they even knew who was in charge. And, sir, I don't want to get, you know, too, I don't want to delve too much into your personal affairs, but didn't a police officer take an initial report? No. The only report we got was from the ambulance uh, company. That was it. There was no police report that we could find. So the because ambulance the responders, they're the ones who wrote the report. Right. And the, and the only thing we could find, and I, I kind of sort of think it was, it's like a blame game. This is where you can't sue the casinos because there's nobody in charge. And great call. Thank you for that call. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, yi yi. Now, look, I know people who've, you know, been to Vegas. They spend time in Vegas. They all tell me, Jeff, that the place is insane. I go, what do you mean it's insane? There's just so much stuff going on. These casinos are huge. They're massive. There's gambling. There's people. There's a swarm of people on the main strip. There's just a swarm of people. There's so much going on. Uh, it's almost disorienting how much activity there is. So, and there's, you know, people coming in, people coming out, a lot of transients, a lot of rootless people. You know what they say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So I get all of that. But, ay, ay, ay. So, look, what I want to know now is this. It's a very simple question. Okay, it's time to connect the dots. We know the hotel dispatcher was contacted. We know. We've got the audio. Did the hotel dispatcher call the police? If the person did, okay. If they didn't, why not? That's It's an obvious point. And if they did call the police, guys, 18 minutes. How do you explain 18 minutes? And here's why I know I sense there's a cover-up. Because the Las Vegas media is now closing in on this. And they're asking the sheriff. And now the sheriff is punting to the deputy sheriff. And the deputy sheriff is punting, I swear, to the assistant deputy sheriff about the timeline, and about why it took the police so long to arrive. And their their lips are sealed. They don't want to talk about the 18 minutes. 617-266-6868. Are the police now covering up for the casino? Are they now covering up for the Mandalay Bay? You've got to ask that question. Mark in New York. Go ahead, Mark. Jeff, first, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for not being distracted and for staying on this story. Thank you so much for that, Jeff. No, oh, I, I won't. I'm not going to. It's the deadliest mass shooting in American history. How, we owe it to the victims to find out the truth. 
Uh, Jeff, Jeff, just two points. Uh, I have personally spoken face to face with the victims that were wounded over there in Las Vegas, and they're telling me that when they were in the hospital, wounded with bullet holes, there were FBI agents saying you need to change your story from multiple shooters to one shooter, otherwise you're not going to leave the hospital. That's what they're telling me. And the second thing is, Jeff, um, the very next day after uh, the, the shooting, uh, various media outlets took photographs and video of the Mandalay Hotel. There were 10 windows blown out, Jeff, not two. Uh, Mark, the first point, uh, the second point, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely look into that. The first point, that to me is incredible. So you have the FBI coaching some of the witnesses and like no no your eyes may have seen uh, two shooters or three shooters but no no it's one shooter okay see and that's another thing look to me this is just common sense okay i want you to think about this it's las vegas isis has said vowed repeatedly that they are going to bring las vegas to its knees and you're going to see a spectacular terrorist attack okay this is well known they you can look it up for yourself they threatened las vegas they made a big deal about it so now you have a gunman on the 32nd floor i want you to think about this unleashing hellfire at a concert you've got bodies everywhere dead people everywhere people injured everywhere complete and utter pandemonium and within 12 hours 12 hours, look it up. Don't take my word for it. Look it up. This was not terrorism. This had no connection to international terrorism. He acted alone. There were no multiple shooters. There wasn't a second shooter, a third shooter. They claimed they had to backtrack. There was no accomplice even. So nobody helped him. He did it all on his own. Okay, why? He snapped. Now, you tell me. 12 hours, 12 hours, you're talking bodies everywhere, blood everywhere, people fighting for their lives in the, uh, in the hospital, and you've already made these conclusions? And then you spit this out to the media, and they repeat it again and again and again and again, and then the next day, it's already gun control? They already moved on the bump stocks. Notice, oh, were they fast on those bump stocks? Oh, oh, with the arsenal, what he had, what he didn't have, what he converted from semi-automatic to automatic. Then, that they got out quick. That they had. Then they were definitive. That they weren't ruling out. Bump stocks. Bump stocks. Bump stocks. Bump stocks. Oh, and universal background checks. That, that was being pumped out right away. So, I'm looking at this. This is just common sense. I know people in law enforcement. Within 12 hours, if you got a single murder, what's the motive? Look into it. Could somebody else have been involved? I don't know. In other words, there's a lot of unanswered questions. They're not. They're reluctant to talk 12 hours after a single murder. Never mind the greatest mass. Uh, sorry, deadliest mass shooting in American history. A massacre. Hey guys. I know you think we're dumb, but we're not that dumb. David in Central Massachusetts. Go ahead, David. Hi, Jeff. Uh, thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. Uh, the, uh, the question I've had is, where is the video surveillance? The, uh, the shooter checked in on the 28th. He was in the hotel for, you know. The 25th. Days. They lied about 25th. that, too. It's official. Okay. The 25th. Okay. So, you know, I was at Mandalay Bay, and, you know, there's security cameras out front where the cars come in. They're in the hallways. They're in the lobby, and we see nothing. They, they, they put out a, a, a videotape of him, I think, uh, back in 2011, uh, but nothing current. And that's really strange. David, you you said you stayed at the Mandalay Bay, correct? I didn't. I did not stay there. I went to see the Michael Jackson show the night before the shooting. Oh, really? Yeah. The night before the shooting. The night before. We, I flew out on that Sunday. Oh, my God. But the uh, night before I went to see that show. David, my understanding is from a couple of my friends who've been to Vegas, been to the Mandalay Bay, they say there are video cameras that go, Jeff, everywhere. everywhere. They go, like, everywhere. Everywhere. 
ev- everywhere. I- I'm just amazed because there's something on that video they don't want us to see. Uh-huh. And that's why it hasn't been released. There's something there. Because don't forget, when the Boston bombers, uh, when they were looking for accomplices for the Boston bombers, day after day we start surveilling. Oh, yeah. Out in front of the John Hancock building. You know, we saw the, uh, the uh, backpack. We saw everything. Yeah. And here, nothing. 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 David, you're dead on. Thank you for that call. Look, it's very suspicious. Uh, look, I remember I covered the Boston bombing here on RKO. Uh, Brittany, how quickly? I mean, they turned that video around pretty quick. You know, I mean, yeah, it wasn't. They needed, they needed people to give information about if people knew him or, and all that stuff. Yeah. So I think that's very suspicious as well that we haven't seen any of the videos. Now, here's another log on the fire. So this also broke yesterday. So if you remember, right, of the many things they kept guaranteeing us within 12 hours, what was the other one, right? Not terrorism, he was a lone wolf, only shooter, he snapped, blah, blah. Remember, the girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, was not involved. Within 12 hours, not involved. Not, not a suspect, not a person of interest, not involved, nothing. Guess what? Yesterday, now she has been put on the... Um, the watch list, the FBI watch list, in case she decides to travel or go on a plane or go overseas. Well, if she's as innocent as they've been telling us now for the last 10 days, don't even think it, Jeff. Don't even, don't even think she had a role in this, Jeff. Jeff, you're going to be a conspiracy theorist. You watch yourself, Jeff. How come now she's on a, on a watch list, on an FBI watch list in case she flies? I mean, if she's completely innocent and knew nothing about this, who cares what plane she goes on or where she flies? Again, it doesn't pass the smell test. Okay, my friends, we're going to continue to take your calls. Take your calls. However, another big story is developing. Uh, We are now clearly, slowly, potentially drifting towards war with North Korea. Trump, in fact, on Hannity last night, would not even say anything. When asked, are we going to go to war, he would not deny it. John Bolton, an advisor now to Trump, I think he's going to get a high position, is going to be on next to discuss North Korea and whether we are going to war. You don't want to miss it. Don't touch that dial. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's 1 o'clock.